Uh, the Borough of Culture will provide us with an opportunity, as I say, to um, show the best of uh, our arts and culture, building on the uh, fantastic Imagine Wirral programme, which uh, took place in, throughout this, this year, which included fantastic events such as the Giants of New Brighton, the Tall Ships Festival, the Light Show in Hamilton Square, uh, a cardboard castle in West Kirby, an exhibition of world famous photographers in New Brighton, and the ever popular River of Light fireworks festival. These events generated large, uh, large, huge interest from thousands of people who visited Wirral. A couple of weeks ago, Mr Mayor, we revealed some of the highlights of our Borough of Culture programme for 2019. The year will be based around the themes of exploration and discovery, inspired by the Sardinia Attenborough Polar Explorer vessel, currently being uh, built at Camel Laird. And also, we will be marking next year as the start of the Eureka Mersey, the National Children's Museum in Seacombe. A particular highlight of the, our Borough of Culture Year will be an exciting commission with last year's UK City of Culture Hull and next year's first London Borough of Culture Waltham Forest, which will take place across three amazing locations, including Birkenhead Park. Mr Mayor will also be uh, hosting the Walker Cup at Royal Liverpool and will shortly be announcing another major sporting event. More details about the whole Borough of Culture for next year will follow shortly and I would urge all members of the Council to get right behind what will be a fantastic year for Liverpool. Thank you Mr Mayor. Right. Councillor Bruce Berry. Thank you Mr Mayor. Uh, my question is for the, uh, the Cabinet Member for Jobs and Growth, um, Councillor Andrew Davis. Uh, the Cabinet Member uh, refers to £150 million being invested in, amongst other things, uh, new council buildings in Birkenhead. But why is none of that investment in new ferry or indeed in this car? Thank you. Councillor Andrew Davis. Uh, thank you, thank you very much uh, for your uh, question, um, Councillor Berry. Um, as you quite rightly said, the um, significant investment is a massive investment in Birkenhead and commercial district. Um, and of course, part of it is is because of the World Growth Company, which is actually about regeneration um, across the whole of the world. Um, in terms of um, new ferry. <coughs> Um, I know that there's a motion on that later on, and also um, Liverpool City Region will be supporting that as well. Councillor Alan Bray. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, my question is for Councillor George Davis, um, and I refer to the penultimate paragraph of the report, uh, in which uh, Councillor says that uh, since April 2015, nearly 900 properties have been uh, brought back into use. Um, now, as I read this uh, paragraph, uh, Mr Mayor, uh, I couldn't help but notice it was the identical paragraph that appeared in the previous report in the October. Um, and I wonder if, uh, rather than copying and pasting uh, his comments, the Councillor Davis could tell us how many further properties have been brought into use in the last two months, and indeed, how <coughs> many uh, uh, properties have now become vacant and, uh, uh, and need further attention? Councillor George Davis. Councillor George Davis, uh, Cabinet for Housing and Planning. 
Is the cabinet member aware that the government guidance states that local housing need does not represent a mandatory target, but is simply a starting point for planning? And local authorities may choose to plan in excess of this, or to conclude that they are unable to meet all housing targets within their boundaries, for example, due to the constraints such as protected designations and green belt. Thanks, George Davis. Thank you. Uh, I thank you again for the question. And yes, I am very well aware of all those figures, but my figures, I'm looking for the OMS figure, which is 488, and that's what I'll be looking for. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Tony Cox. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Question to the Leader of the Council, Phil Davis. Uh, can the Leader of the Council please tell us why he's chosen to put significant council taxpayers' resources into the folly that is? Boy, they golf resort. I'm glad you asked me that because it's interesting that the Conservatives have a motion of an amendment tonight uh, which actually say that you now support the golf resort but it should be paid for by private sector funding. So you've moved your position, uh, you haven't moved your position which was just rejected completely to say okay, provided it's uh, provided by the private sector. So that's an interesting development. Maybe you could uh, explain that to people. Yeah, but, the, but the reality is, Mr. Mayor, we know, don't we, because of the cuts that this council suffered uh, from central government, the Tory government over the last uh, eight years, the tune of about 250 million, we need to uh, bring in new income streams. Uh, otherwise, we'll go the same way as Tory controlled Northamptonshire and Tory controlled uh, East Somerset that have basically gone broke because they spent all the reserves. The consultants so it's, 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 it's essential. It's essential that we look at how we can bring um, uh, additional funding into the borough through schemes like the Hoyle Lake Office Resort. But as, oh, as, my colleague, as my colleague has said, we're at the stage where we're still doing feasibility studies, we're still looking at the economic impact, the environmental impact. And That's the debt for the consultants' and pockets. I, I believe that you, that you, make, you should make decisions based on the evidence, not just some kind of uh, nebulous campaign slogan. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Yeah. No thanks to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My question is to the Edwin to finance and income. In view of the light of the Tory government dragging its feet over New Ferry, can you give us an update on what the council's going to do with New Ferry, please? Yeah, thank you for your question, Joe. You're right, actually, the Tories are you can drag in the heels. They're an actually disgrace. They, they completely ignore New Ferry. Um, the latest update is, uh, in addition to the um, funding we've already uh, invested there with regards to the clean-up post-blast, which is over 300000 We've agreed in principle to set aside a separate hardship fund for those victims of the blast, which will be for New Ferry, only for New Ferry, um, and the criteria will be different to our, our other hardship funds, local welfare assistance scheme. So that's where we're up to at the minute. Thank you. Councillor Pat Clare. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I have a question for Councillor Anita Leach, please. Um, an easy report, it refers to the fact that Kingdom have been in the news recently. Uh, however, it fails to mention that numerous press reports and leaked internal communications clearly show Kingdom staff using insulting, aggressive and intimidating behaviour towards members of the public. The Mayor of Liverpool has acted on this disgraceful behaviour by kicking Kingdom out of Liverpool. This follows similar action taken by numerous other councils including Flintshire, Denbyshire and Conway. <coughs> Sadly, Wirral continues to indulge the Kingdom's behaviour. Uh, it is clear that the so-called zero tolerance approach to littering in Wirral is in reality an open invitation for Kingdom to behave as they please with minimal oversight. So why does the Cabinet member think that the Mayor of Liverpool was wrong to dump Kingdom and what steps is she taking to ensure those Kingdom staff who have shown such disrespect for our residents will no longer be operating in Wirral. Thank you. Councillor Nita Leach. Uh, thank you for your question in advance, Councillor Cleary. As you can see, I can't write very quickly these days, so thank you very much. 
actual outreach uh, Just in response to your question regarding Kingdom and the recent press coverage uh, of comments allegedly made by Kingdom staff and the implications of Liverpool's decision to terminate their contract with Kingdom. Firstly, I must state that we are disappointed by the comments allegedly made by Kingdom officers with the, within the leaked WhatsApp group conversations and as a matter of course, request Kingdom's management to launch an investigation into what had occurred. Following their subsequent investigation, Kingdom responded to us to state that the data made available to them by the journalist who brought it to their attention was edited to remove any indication as to who each comment could be attributed to. It was, however, identifiable as Team Wirral and Kingdom's inquiries indicate a private but unauthorised by senior managers of Kingdom WhatsApp group account which was set up in 2017 between the group who appear to have all been employed by Kingdom and Wirral. Kingdom Wirral's operation is now under the control of a new management team and as such Kingdom have reinforced the standards expected of any organisation providing this type of service on behalf of any public body and the community they serve. The council's officers are working closely with Kingdom and the local managers to oversee the delivery of enforcement operations and the requirements of the council's environment enforcement contract. Secondly, I will point out that tackling environmental crime such as littering and dog fouling is a priority for this council because we know the negative impact that has on the environment and also the adverse effect it has on residents and their quality of life. The feedback we get from residents is that they want to see action taken against the perpetrators of environmental crime. Therefore, we make no apology about taking action. The high profile deterrent created through the enforcement regime established several years ago is regarded as a key element of the formula that will drive behaviour change over time. The arrangements we have for Kingdom have been a success in tackling key environmental crime over the past three years since our first contract with, with them started. Kingdom have performed well in carrying out the Council's instructions on enforcement which is overseen through robust contractual arrangements and in line with the Council's enforcement policy. And as you will recall, recently subject of detailed scrutiny by the Council's Environmental Overview and Scrutiny Committee. On the occasions that things have gone wrong, then we have had them investigated and we have a strong connection with the management team with and our enforcement officers. Councillor Cherry Pogel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my question is to Councillor Phil Brightmore, uh, Cabinet Member for Leisure and Recreation. Uh, can I ask why has Brackenwood Golf Course been excluded from the proposed transfer of municipal golf courses to other providers? Councillor Brightmore. Thank you for your question, Councillor Uh Bracken Golf Course is part of the Green Space Review, and once that review is concluded, it will be decided what to do with that golf course. Thank you. Yeah. Councillor Stuart Kelly. Thank you, uh, uh, thank you uh, uh, Mr Mayor. Question for uh, Councillor Josh Davis on the housing numbers used in the local plan, uh, specifically with regards to oil waters. Uh, the July Cabinet report included estimated numbers for well waters of 1,100 units over the 15 year period of the plan. In his letter to residents that followed that report, the council leader, leader cited 2,700 units over that period. At the same time, Peel Holding joked to us all and indicated a range of numbers depending on their ability to draw down investments, the lower end being 2,900 units through 4,650 up to 6,450. Last month, when considering Glenfield site capacity, the planning committee allocated 1,092 units against Will Waters over a 
time frame of five years, <coughs> but made no comment uh, on the, its potential ground field capacity over the 15 years of the plan. George, you will know that there's only two ways it can avoid encroachment onto the Green Belt and onto the Blackwell Golf Course. Okay. First is for the government to accept the new up-to-date OMS figures for household formation, and the second is to ensure the brownfield sites like Willow Waters are maximised. Can I ask indirectly, what is the figure currently being used in the local plan for housing likely to be provided at Willow Waters? Councillor George Davis. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Stuart, for the, for the question. Um, like you, I am bewildered with Peel. Um, if you remember, going back some time, at this present moment in time, we've got 1,100 units which we are waiting and expecting planning permission for in the next four months. We have no further number from Peel. We've written to them, we've written to the Minister, and at this present moment in time, that is all I can say to you. At this present moment in time, Peel have guaranteed 1,100 units. Councillor Chris Blaine. Thank you, Mr. A question to Councillor Angela Davis. Does the Cabinet Member for Jobs and Growth agree with their old colleague, Councillor Norbury, when he states on social media, will Council need to take back control of our shipyard the current owners are proving extreme incompetence and putting the motors at risk along with the whole future of the yard and that of the growth of Birkenhead. And does she also agree with the statement as a Labour Party councillor representing the people of Birkenhead and the poor by the treatment of our highly skilled workforce at Camelinus? I move that Will Council cease all partnership work on appeal holdings until all have done the chief oh, I'm sure. Councillor Angela Davis. Um, thank you um, very much for your, for your question, um, Chris. In terms of um, Camelot, I was proud to <coughs> to go on, on the picket line to support the workers there. I'm really pleased at the statement that Phil um, has made tonight in relation to Camelot and that the um, redundancy notices have been withdrawn. Councillor Jeff Green. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My question is to Councillor Stuart Whittingham, Cabinet Member for Highways and Transport. Stuart, uh, can you tell us why, for the first time in 15 years, members have not been invited to submit roads for consideration in the next structural maintenance programme? Councillor Stuart Whittingham. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I mean, this is Councillor Gilchrist's answer. Let me know if that's up shortly. <laughs> it's, it's an answer, but it's quite proper answer. Councillor Brown, can everyone you get in? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Mr. Mayor. I'd like to ask a question of the relevant Cabinet Member, Councillor Angie Davis. If she can give the Council an update, please, on the plans for the Birkenhead Commercial District. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Angie Davis. Thanks very much for your, for your question, um, Councillor Kenny. Um, regeneration and inclusive growth um, are at the heart of this administration's 2020 pledges and it was in February this year that Cabinet agreed a joint venture partnership between news developments um, and Rural Borough Council and this joint venture partnership is known as, as Rural Growth Company. It was, uh, Rural Growth Company was created to lead regeneration across the whole of our borough and in the first phase it's proposing to progress public consultation in relation to Morton, Babington, West Kirby, Bromborough and, and Birkenhead. And Cabinet recently approved to start a broad and inclusive consultation on Rural Growth Company's redevelopment of Birkenhead Town Centre. This consultation is going to be about listening to and engaging with local residents, community groups and businesses so that we can hear their ideas and views on a master plan for Birkenhead Town Centre. And at the heart of our Town Centre will be the Birkenhead Commercial District. So this is going to um, comprise of an iconic market, an improved retail and leisure offer, um, improved and sustainable public realm, 
and over 300,000 square foot of grade A office space. Housing? And this grade A office space is an amazing opportunity for the public sector, the voluntary sector and the private sector. Flats? So, Borough yeah. Borough Council Maze has Nets. Yeah. Quiet please. Uh, Borough Borough Council has an excess of 1,700 back office and administrative staff spread out across multiple buildings and sites. And um, we looked at a business case to bring people together into a modern, efficient, accessible and centrally located commercial district. And there's multiple benefits to doing this. Improved communication and joined up working and collaboration. It will um, reduce expensive leases and maintenance. And bringing all those people into the uh, centre of Birkenhead, that increased footfall um, is going to have a really positive impact on the wider economy. People want somewhere to, to go and get um, a cup of coffee, to get their lunch, to live. do some shopping, Social and to go out after work. So this is going to act as a catalyst um, for other public sector, voluntary sector and private sector to be a part of um, Birkenhead's commercial district. Um, I'm proud of the job opportunities and employment that this is going to create uh, for so many individuals and families. I'm proud of the apprenticeships <coughs> that it's going to create for young people in our borough. And I'm really proud of the high local, bi local commitment um, that we have made. So, we're a growth company, is an absolute game changer. And I look forward to the regeneration and transformation of our borough that World Growth Company will bring. Shopping mall. Councillor Wendy Clements. When does it start? Mr. Mayor, my question is for Cabinet Member for Adult Care and Health. Um, Chris, you haven't made any mention in your report about the CCG's consultation about urgent care walking centres. Would you just like to tell us whether you've made your own? Um, Submission to the consultation yet and possibly share your thoughts? Councillor Chris Jones. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as you know, the, the consultation has been going on and we saw the, uh, the petition thus come in. Um, I, I have submitted um, to the uh, petition um, in the sense of the consultation um, and I think we should wait and see what the outcome is going to be. Um, I know it's been scrutiny and it's, it's coming again, I believe. Um, and uh, good luck, good luck. Councillor Jerry Oates. In the beginning of the report, Phil, you say they made some the new progress in the bit, all the areas in which you look for and that you are providing unique services to the public. Now, one area in West Kirby, in the park, in Eston Park, has, in the last short three or four weeks, had many of its trees savagely condemned. Um, now, apparently, there's been a, there's been a, um, <coughs> And apparently a lot of the trees have been recommended for surgery. But there was no consultation with the local residents about this, or the local councillors. And the, the team of tree cuts just came in and just started knocking trees down, apparently all over the place. I knew people and I went to watch them, we tried to stop them. Now, are, are you satisfied that whatever plans were made are being carried out properly and carefully and are you sure that some of these trees could not be left there because they're breaking the hearts of the local residents to see their lovely fine trees being cut down. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Thanks.
Carry on, Councillor Brightmore. The work currently taking place at Aston Hall is due to uh, safety service of most of the time. Right. It's always regrettable when trees need to be acted upon or even fell owing to public safety. Oh, what about that lake? That's normal. If you do not be quiet, I will have you removed. Now, carry on, Councillor Brightmore. I'm satisfied the work was necessary and proportional response to safety requirements to the public safety of this council. Shame on you. Shame on you. Councillor Elderson. Thank you, Mr Mayor. This is a, a really a supplementary question in a sense, but an important uh, slant on um, a previous question to uh, George Davis, the Cabinet Member for Housing and Planning. Um, the Cabinet Member states that the Government sets, sorry, I've got the wrong one, the statement that 900 properties have been returned to the housing market. This equates to approximately 350 houses per annum. So at the same rate, potentially most of the four to 6,000 empty houses on the Wirral could be brought back into use during the period of the local plan. So considering that point, how many empty houses do the Council propose to include in that local plan? Because however many are included would help in meeting the target. Thank you. Councillor George. Thank you, Dr. David. I think the, the answer to that one, for example, is as many as possible. And if this present law was in charge, it's not that you know, About 3,500. Are you the boss, or not? Yeah. I'm the boss. Quite in the gallery, man. Councillor Cormier. Thank you, Mr Mayor. You are the boss in this chamber, actually. But, Mr Mayor, I've got a question for the leader of the council, Councillor Phil Davis. Can the leader confirm the status of the bids? to the Metro Mayor's Fund for New Ferry, and also for the list card, as announced by the Deputy Leader. Councillor Phil Davis. Yeah, I can um, tell you that the work is, is taking place um, at the moment um, by our officers to put a proposition forward for the Mayor's uh, £1 million fund that he's announced for each of the six boroughs, uh, and the uh, rural submission will be half a million for this garden, half a million for new ferry, those bids are in preparation. Uh, obviously, we need to go through due diligence, uh, but I'm very optimistic and confident that that money will uh, be uh, uh, provided to those uh, those two communities for much needed improvements. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Andrew Hobson. Thank you. Question of hope. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> this is to the leader, Phil Davis. On the 10th of September, a Twitter account which lists the leader of the Labour Group as the legal promoters stated, billionaires Peel are colluding with Wirral Tories to get Wirral Council taxpayers to fund their scheme. Does the leader agree with that allegation? And if not, will he apologise for it now? <laughs> well, my, my uh, position with regard to Peel is that they are a major landowner of brownfield sites. It goes back to the question earlier on about Willow Waters, and they have um, a, a responsibility to deliver on the original promise. And can I remind the council that when they got planning permission for Willow Waters, they promised 13,500 houses to be built on Willow Waters. Uh, so far, we have built zero, zero houses. Uh, as George has said, we only have uh, uh, evidence of 1,100. So I, uh, and I'm quite happy to repeat this again, He'll need to step up to the plate and meet their commitments and their promises to the people of the world. And if they delivered their 13,500 that they originally promised, we wouldn't have to build on any of the billion dollars. So come on, Neil, deliver what you promised. <laughs> 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 It's not a supplementary, I want the question asked. Do you link the Tories with me? I think you've had the answer. Satisfactory or not? The answer, I'm sorry. I apologise. What's about the plan? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've got a question for Phil Brightmore, the Cabinet Member for Leisure and Create Recreation. The Cabinet Member once again refers to the review of the library service, but once again fails to give any indication as to what is planned. Will the Cabinet Member, please, who has read all the reports, who has met with staff and managers, 
confirm now that no library will be closing. Councillor Brightmore. Thank you, Councillor Sykes. Proposals are still being drawn up because I'll be sent to the scrutiny committee and anyone else wants to see my mm -hmm. Councillor Steve Williams. I give you a question for Stuart Whittingham, I raise my hand for Can the Cabinet member confirm how much the Government has awarded the Council for the works that you've outlined in the report about Tower Road? Sorry. Sorry, Stuart Whittingham. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll send you a reference. It's a substantial sum. Councillor Ian Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A question for Councillor Brightmore. Uh, and just giving the opportunity to do something different to the rest of his cabinet colleagues tonight. If you could perhaps answer the question, it would be appreciated. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, the cabinet colleague, the member. Sorry? Hush, no. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, his colleague, the Cabinet Member for Jobs and Growth, re uh, referred to her delight that the, her administration that she is a part of is promoting inclusive growth. Many of us on this side of the chamber believe that the proposals for her Lake Golf Resort are exclusive growth and that you've got to be fairly wealthy to either live there or to, or to play there. In his report, he mentions, in his report, he mentions the transfer of Arrow Park and the Warren Municipal Golf Course in my ward in Wallasey, which Mr. Roberts asked him about earlier, to an alternative specialist golf provider. Highlighting that the national trend in his report, it highlights that the national trend in golf usage is down. <coughs> Why is he determined, as part of the cabinet, to continue with a project that very few people want or need for a, a, support, a support that is in serious decline, as his own report states, and why will the council not look at other options for the site, such as a wildfowl a wild and wetlands resort, yeah. a cycling centre, which, which would be appealing to far more users and visitors and do far more for leisure and recreation for the people in this borough, for the many and not the few. Yeah. One way in which you can do this is by moving uh, the operation of Arrow Park and Warren to an alternative provider. But well, Hoyle Golf Resort is an example of how golf has to change and move into a, a new area in order to attract new people to play the sport. However, as my colleague mentioned, uh, views are currently taking place in investigations and ultimately it's a matter of time. Question to the Cabinet Member for Finance. Uh, you refer to the savings from senior management in your report. Can you give council an update, please? Councillor Jack Williamson. Thanks for that question, George. Okay, thank you for that question, George. Yeah, you refer to one of our uh, <coughs> options here. So, a quick update <coughs> for council. And senior management refers to all workers not on the front line, not in the front line role. And this includes back office staff on more than 40,000 per annum. It's a restructure of senior management to save the council money. The exercise has been conducted in November and we are currently, council is currently talking to applicants and managers to determine whether or not the posts can be deleted. I would like to assure council that we are approaching this voluntary redundancy scheme in a certainly more intelligent approach than the Tories did when they had their brief stint in power when they laid off thousands of workers uh, indiscriminately. It's now for the relevance. Let's make a point of order before you continue. What, what's that? What's um, it, it's in relation? Is it? Is it? Um, perhaps you could ask the board of solicitors. Is it relevant for uh, members of the executive to ask questions of the executive uh, with regards to their results? Or does it, does it make more sense for it to be the opposition or backbenchers to actually ask questions of the executive to hold into account? I understand that any member can ask a question. Councillor Rollins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. But I must register my, my dismay that uh, filibustering is going along where members are asking other members of their own party questions, therefore taking time up from the opposition of asking well, legitimate yeah. questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, this is a question to the 
cabinet member for finance, Jeanette Williams. Uh, can the cabinet member advise how much money, if any, is currently owned by the Royal Board of Councils and the National Health Service, and will she provide a breakdown of outstanding debt? Councillor Jeanette Williamson. Well, I think we all know I'm not going to be able to provide those figures tonight, so I will provide the response to that question in writing. Councillor Leslie Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, my question is to the uh, to Anita Leach, um, the cabinet member for the environment. I was pleased to read on page 44 of the agenda tonight and in your report that um, there has been fines imposed on irresponsible dog owners. Um, which made me then wonder where, we, in, in fact, you were up to with the uh, public space protection order. Since you've become the cabinet member, have you had time to meet with any of the representatives who are opposed to that? Because quite clearly, it would be such a shame for world if responsible dog owners were penalised and restricted from where they walk their animals. And just further to that, um, perhaps you could inform us of the correct figures um, and I hope I pronounced this right, for um, the disease of toxocaryasis, I think it's called, um, which clearly affects, affects people who are uh, become infected with um, infections uh, caused by the uh, feces of uh, dogs particularly. Because I think um, when the leader of the council at a previous meeting informed us, um, he must have been misinformed because uh, the figures that he gave were grossly exaggerated to work. Thank you for your question. Uh, just in terms of the PSCM, um, I've actually been looking at that quite a lot of detail since I've become the cabinet member. I didn't want to rush into any decisions. Uh, we're actually going to have some uh, pre-decision scrutiny on that. The date has just been set for, I think it was the 15th of January, if my memory serves me right. Um, so um, hopefully the pre-decision scrutiny will bring up all of the points that have been raised by uh, the various uh, members, such as the Rural Good Dogs, etc. Um, I have agreed to meet with them um, ahead of that or after that, whichever that, you know suits them. Just in terms of the information that was given to uh, Councillor Davis, um, it was my mistake. Um, I gave him that figure and uh, it was uh, an administrative error because unfortunately I'm having to write with my left hand at the moment and when I was taking my when, yeah, the, oh, yeah. when, when I was actually taking my notes uh, I actually wrote, wrote it down and I, I interpreted it as six and I do apologise to the council for that. Councillor yeah. Chris Carabier. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Mayor. This is a question for uh, Christy Jones. To carry on, actually, I wasn't going to say anything, but it was a comment she made to um, Councillor Clements when she asked about the funding and CCG stuff, and she said, good luck with that with the next time it comes to Council, or the next time it comes to shooting. Could she um, figure out some way of changing the Constitution or applying to it for us so that the Children's Shooting Commission can have a vote on this as well? Seems like we've argued and argued. We were allowed to sit at the big table and ask questions, but we can't vote on it, which is ridiculous. <coughs> I believe it's a constitutional matter. Mr. Chris Jones. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I know that in the last two quarters, it's been a real concern of, of all members, really, that um, the Children's Committee have not been able to, to actually vote or be very involved, especially in the last one. Um, but I, I think there's a, going to be a, a bit of a review anyway of the Constitution, and I wonder whether, you know, we could look at that, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Phil Gilchrist. Thank you, Mr Mayor. A question for Janet Williamson on the Finance and Income Generation Report. On the second page, it writes about the government taking the final steps towards removing central financial support to councils like the world. Uh, whilst there's a degree of national chaos about the government at the moment,